Good morning from Joshua Tree National Park. We just wrapped up our final hike of the weekend. We have been here for two days, uh, more than enough for Joshua Tree. You could knock out Joshua Tree in a day. You could knock it out in a few hours. It really depends on what you do. This is a park that if all you have is a little bit of time and you want to check it off, you could drive through it. Easily. Do a few stops. Say you saw the Joshua Trees and the, I'm not going to say Monzo it right. Granite. Monzo Granite Boulders. <laughs> I don't know. They look like monkey bread to me, if anybody knows what monkey bread is. And now we're all just hungry because we've been staring at them all weekend. Yes. <laughs> uh, but we ended up spending the, a couple of nights here at one of the campgrounds, and there are different options for camping here. It's weird because within Joshua Tree National Park proper, the whole the big part of the park, there's a number of rustic campgrounds, and you can tent in there, you can get camper vans in there, small trailers maybe. Um, really do your homework because those sites are very tight among some of the rocks. We ended up camping at Black Rock Canyon, which is actually a little bit of the ways out of the park. It's technically still in the park boundaries, but you have to leave the park, drive eight miles to the visitor center, uh, and then go into, you know, go back into the park. What we really liked about this particular campground was that it had flush toilets and water because all of the campgrounds inside the park have no water and vault toilets. And in fact, the only water in the park at all are at the three visitor centers, which are at the far reaches of the park. And then it is a good 30 plus mile drive through the park from entrance to entrance. And there is absolutely no water anywhere else in the park. So A, you just need to know that and come prepared. But from a camping perspective, um, we didn't mind driving those extra eight miles just so that we could have water because it was and, and refill and, you know, flush toilets and everything because it's very hot and dry here at uh, late June. So water is a crucial part of experiencing this park. <laughs> and one nice thing about Black Rock, if you have an RV, a little bit bigger rig, there are some bigger spaces here. We happen to be in a very small one, but we picked that on purpose. Um, there's water here that you can fill for your rig. There's a dump station. Uh, you have the flush toilets. So that's an option if you uh, have a bigger rig and need to be uh, staying here at Joshua Tree. You mentioned being very hot in the desert. This is the Mojave Desert, which is what makes Joshua Tree unique is that we have Joshua trees here in a very large abundance and it's because they are in the Mojave Desert. Clearly the whole point of Joshua Tree National Park is the Joshua trees, which are actually a form of yucca. And that is in abundance here in this national park because the Mojave Desert is higher in elevation, it's sort of the high desert, compared to, say, the Colorado desert, which is actually the lower half of this park. So Joshua Tree National Park is like 800,000 acres split in a dividing line between those two deserts. It's just the way the natural geography goes. So if you come in from the south entrance, you're going to be coming through the Colorado desert. You're going to see uh, more of the low scrub, the smaller yuccas, the choya cactus and then as you continue climbing up here into the high desert and the mojave desert all of a sudden you like round a bend and there's just joshua trees everywhere and it's crazy and then they, they continue forever and ever at least within the mojave and so when they created this park they specifically wanted to encompass this large area to preserve it because uh, way back in like the early 1900s 1940s people that were settling in the Palm Springs or LA area thought that the cacti would make great lawn ornaments and decoration for their landscaping. So they basically came in here and took all the cactus away. Luckily, uh, through the work of President Franklin Roosevelt, who created the National Park in 1936, uh, we now have all these Joshua trees for us to look at. We've talked about being able to, to just drive through this park. And that is something that you can do. And you mentioned it, like you come in the south entrance, Choya Gardens, Choya Cactus, I think it's Choya, that's how you say it, right? Choya Cactus Garden. Yes, is a very cool area to stop at. That's one that we would recommend. It's just a huge collection of those little, I think it's the teddy bear cactus is what they call them, the Choyas. They look cute and fuzzy, do not touch them, but it's a huge quantity of them. Oh, and they're found like nowhere else in this park, but in that section. And just because it's as those two deserts converge, it's the right environment for them in that quantity. So make sure that you do stop there on your way, even if you're coming from the north entrance to south entrance, that is a highlight of this park. As you continue driving through the park, there are a number of different turnouts, pull-offs, parking lots, picnic areas, places to hike. So you can spend as much or as little time here. You literally can do this in a couple hours. You can drive all the way through and call it good. 
You could stop and have a picnic. You could go on a couple short hikes or a couple long hikes, not in the summer because it's way too hot for long hikes in the summer. Um, or you could spend a weekend or a week here and do some of those longer hikes if you were here more in the winter time. You're not really gonna see a whole lot different other than more choya, more yucca, more Joshua trees, more monkey bread rocks. Um, but it probably would be pretty cool and you might see different wildlife. That might be the one difference depending on the time of year you come. If you do spend time here and you wanna knock out some hikes, we'd recommend a few short ones that you could even do in the summer if you do them in the morning. Um, it depends on what you wanna see. If you wanna see some of the, the man-made history, uh, there is Barker Dam where there's actually a historic dam and Wall Street Mill. I think is also from um, that area, same, that parking area. Yeah, same parking area, two different trails. Yep. And then if you want to see nature and what the rocks have become, you've got Arch Rock and Heart Rock together on the same trail. So that was kind of cool. And then we also did Hidden Valley Trail, which is a little bit of both. It's, it's a natural area that's really kind of neat in there, um, but it's got some history to it because apparently cattle rustlers used to put cows in there and keep and, them hidden. <laughs> yeah, they were... <laughs> Stealing the cows until basically up until it became a national park. So, and, that's and the, the funny thing about that too is one of the formations that you can see in there is known as cow rock because it looks like a cow, especially when the sun hits it just right, like it did when we were in there and the shadows were just right. That was pretty funny. I really did like those other trails Arch Rock, Heart Rock. Apparently, Heart Rock is like one of the most Instagrammed, you know, rocks in the park. So is Arch Rock. It's a nice, you know, place to go and see. There's like little to no shade. So plan on no shade for any of these trails. And it does get hot. We've sort of learned, and you should too, that long sleeves and long pants and hats are better than no shirts, which we saw a lot of yesterday. People getting hot and taking off their shirts and that's just going to result in a lot of sunburn and overheating. So, um, which we did see yesterday. Which we did see <laughs> yesterday. So it this is not a place to screw around at all. In fact, the tagline here at the park is "Hike smart, don't die today." And that's like on their stickers and their signs and hats and everything. Because the ranger said, "We will come rescue you, but we don't really want to, and we'd prefer you not die today." <laughs> yeah. So and that's why we decided to kind of break it up, and we stayed a couple of nights here. And in fact, this morning we got up and we did High View Trail which is a different kind of trail because it's more up into sort of the hills and mountains here and it, you're looking down into the valley. So that was really pretty. And what's nice about it is you can hike it straight from the Black Rock Canyon campground. So that was a nice feature to be able to do that this morning. And now that the sun's out, it's starting to get really hot out here. We're going to call it a day, but that was a good opportunity to do it right from the campsite. If hiking is not your thing or it's just too dang hot or you're short on time, one thing you should check off in the park though is the Keys View Drive and Overlook. It will take you up kind of to the top of the mountain where you have a lovely view of the entire Coachella Valley, Palm Springs, the mountains, uh, salt and sea in the distance. And on your way there is just an abundant forest of Joshua trees. So that's like the most densely packed area of Joshua trees in the park that we discovered. So that's just an easy drive. And then you can get out, see a view, get back in your car and keep going. Um, and make sure you do that just because you get a little bit of everything on that one drive. So that's the Keys View Drive. Um, but other than that, like you said, spend some time, not a lot of time, whatever you've got. We kind of felt like this is a check off your bucket list park simply because the Joshua trees are the unique feature here, and that's what you're coming for. But otherwise, it's not that much to write home about. <laughs> <laughs> no, but national parks and national monuments exist because we are protecting something. And this area needed to be protected, and it is worth seeing because it was worth protecting. So if you get a chance, check out Joshua Tree National Park. In the meantime, keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there.